All right, g'day everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Explore Rigs. Now, this one is extremely exciting. If you tuned in last week, you would have seen the very first ever CHOP 200 6x6. And now we've got probably one of the latest CHOP 6x6s. But mate, this thing's a little bit different. So we are here with Shane from MSA. Here you go, mate. Good, mate. Good to see you. This thing is something a little bit different, one of a kind. This has never been done before and it hasn't been uh, copied yet either, has it? No, that's right. This is uh, number seven that AAV have done. Yep. Um, the reason behind it, uh, I've got five kids between me and my fiance, so yep. uh, that pretty much ties up a whole wagon and then I can't cart a fridge or anything in the back where we're buggered and I don't want to tow a trailer everywhere we go, so yep. I talk the guys at Australian Expedition Vehicles into a cutting it behind the third row of seats so we've still got our seven seater and we've got all our storage in the back so unreal bloody awesome so seven seat six by six 200 series never been done before first time i seen a picture of this thing i i was i was intrigued and uh, i actually managed to run into you in a car park down at coomera there you and did. i yep. got to have a little bit of a look and i was like mate i'd love to film this thing and um you know the viewers are going to absolutely love it so Let's take a step back before you built this. What sort of cars were you running around in? Uh, we've had a whole heap of dual cab utes. I, uh, I had a standard 200, a uh, pre the, the DP, uh, non DPF model. Yep. Then I had a Y62 Patrol, and I was thinking about chopping that one. Yeah, right. And then I got talked out of that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad I yeah we got back did. to the, the 200. So, yep. Um, yeah, we've had a wide range of them, 79s as well. Yeah, um, I've seen the MSA 79. You've I had a Hilux. You've had sort of. I started life with a, a pretty extreme Troopy yep. as well. That's uh, that was pretty cool back in its day. That had all the gull wing doors and everything on it. So, yeah, right. Yeah, it was cool. But, all right. Well, let's get stuck into this. I'm sure everyone's dying to have a look. So as per usual, we'll start up the front end. We'll work our way all the way around the outside. And then, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll start at the canopy and, and we'll go through the whole lot. Let's get into it. All right, so we made our way all the way to the front of the car. How long is this thing, mate? Okay, Matt, so it's basically from the front of the bar to the, the rear wheels is seven metres long. Yeah, right. Okay. okay, now people might think, okay, that's, that's long. We put it up against our Hilux with a service body on it. Yeah. It was a metre longer than that. Yeah, I was going to say it's... But when you consider, we can sit seven inside there. I yeah. can sleep seven. I got two fridges, a barbecue. I got camping gear for seven people. Yep. And there's no camper trailer on the back. Yeah. So when you actually put a trailer on the back of a standard 200, you're going to find that it's a lot longer, and you're a lot more restricted as to where you can go. We can go wherever we like in this, and 100%. we don't have to worry about parking with a trailer. It's just. It, I'm a big fan of not towing, and I'm probably towing for our lap around Australia next year. And. I mean, the budget doesn't stretch to quite pull this off, so I think I might have to tow. <laughs> All right, let's, let, let's get into it. So up front. So we've got a TJM Outback steel bar here. I love steel bars. They've just, we've, uh, we've beaten them up over a lot of vehicles and a lot of time, and they, they, they handle well. Yeah, it's an absolute must. And then you've obviously got, got the matching... Um, matching side rails there. Obviously, um, you've done a little bit of extension on the side steps. We have. Usually, they'll turn where the, the normal rear wheel arch is, but in yep. this circumstance, we made it fit like yep. right to the end now, and it looks really cool. Oh, I think it finishes it off, I reckon, if you, you know. Nicely. Yeah, you're so. going to stretch it. You might as well uh, make it go all the way to the back. So you've got the light force uh, spotties up front and a light force. Is that light force? Light force, light yep. bar, yeah, as Light well. force, light bar. The worn winch. Was that about a 12,000? That's a 12, yep, 12 and a half ton, that one. 12 so. and a half ton. Is it the Z on these ones? Or? It's a Z on, yep. yep. So. Uh, similar to Brad's, you're going you're gonna to want as much winch power up front as you can get, I think. That's right. Similar to Brad's as well, we've uh, I got a 16 and a half ton on the back as well. So yeah, right. We can pull from both ends. I, I don't like my chances of being tugged out by a chimney yeah. at all. <laughs> so uh, uh, I've got to be very ready to get out myself. Oh, 100%. So. All right, we'll have a look at the rear winch when we get around there. Yep. Uh, the GME aerial on the front. Um, Mate, I'm, I'm the biggest fan of the GMEs. Brad was running the GME. I've, I've absolutely loved it in our truck. I've just yep. put it in the new car as well. Um, and you're running a little stubby aerial. 
You yeah, got the I, big one as well, or you just? I got the big one as well. I don't have any issues with this one. Yep. Um, it seems to stay reasonably still while you're, you're forward driving. Yep. Um, it's got the XRS Connect system in there, so you can connect with the other cars in your convoy. Yeah, that's um, it. I, I just love it. Never had an issue with it, and we got a pair of matching handhelds for if someone's out of the car. Yep. We got. That's we run it. exactly the same. That's um, it. So one thing we didn't touch on at the start was uh, let's run through the base car before you chopped it. We've got a little bit carried away, but that's all right. So year model and uh, what, what model the vehicle is so as well? It's a 19 build, it's a VX. Yep. Um, we just wanted that extra little bit of comfort. That gave AEV all sorts of issues. Yeah, okay. Um, it's a little bit fancy, but the kids can sit in their own climate controlled zone in the back <laughs> there and not like I used to do in the back of the Land Rover. So. No way, so climate control in the very back in row the of the In the rear, it's got all its zones in there and it's, it's unreal. The VX so. is a nice, um, a nice step up because you still get the sunroof for the VX. Got the sunroof and the way that I've put a short rack onto the cab as well yep. and the light bar, the sunroof clears it all so we can still open it up. Still Perfect. open it. Sunroof, climate control in the back and then you get a nicer display on the VX as well, don't you? Yeah, you do. In the yep. 200. We'll have a look at that when we get inside. Let's keep working our way around. All right, so on here, uh, these may be familiar for you, mate, the old MSA mirrors, eh? They are very familiar, mate. Um, three years in the making, I, uh, I couldn't find anything that really liked on the market, so we set about designing our own. Yep. Something that looks awesome and standard on a car. Um, the good part about them is slightly closer to the vehicle than standard. Yeah, okay. You've got a much bigger glass with a slight curve. Yep. It's a really good field of view, and when you pull them out, and rotate them, you can see down the side of absolutely you'd, you'd anything. You'd be able to see the back of this thing just I can about. see the back of the island from here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, are, good job unreal. on them, mate. You have done a cracking job. They look uh, they look unreal. They just look really good. They work well, so we're really happy with them. Oh, Very. good stuff. All right, so we're going to wheels and tyres. I actually skipped that, so let's run back to the front real quickly. Uh, run me through your wheel and tyre setup, mate. Okay, so we've got Icon wheels. That, that was a new rim that they put out. It's got the correct offset for this. Yep. Um, and more importantly, it's got the correct load rating because this has got a GVM of seven ton. Yeah. That doesn't weigh that, but it is over six. Um, your standard Toyota rims just won't cut it. They're just not uh, high enough rated for it. So you've got to go for an aftermarket rim. Yep. It's got the load rating. Um, and the Mickey Thompson ATZ P3s have been unreal. We've only done 20,000 Ks in it so far, but have been over some pretty horrible crap. Um, I've had them down to 10 PSI with all this weight in it to get out of something. Yep. Absolutely no problems at all. So like unreal. GVM is seven ton, and then this thing's good for four and a half ton. Four tow. and a half ton, yeah. It's got eleven and a half GCM on it. Eleven so. and a half GCM, and obviously truck license to drive it. Yeah, just a, a light rigid is fine. Yep. Um, you've got to consider it's not a lot different than a standard two hundred. Yep. It's got an extra axle back there, so that's actually sharing that load. Yeah. You've got an extra set of brakes. You've got an extra set of driving wheels. It's uh, that's really cool. I'm not going to lie, I was hoping to jump in and take these for a spin, but I don't have any light truck, so it looks like you're off the hook. <laughs> you can sit in the passenger seat. Yeah, we'll go in the passenger seat. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So we'll jump. Oh, suspension-wise, up front is uh, the Icon suspension Icon as well. Icon suspension, yeah, but it's fully adjustable. Yep. Um, haven't put it through a lot yet, but it seems to work really well. And that, um, that's similar to Brad's as well, so you've got all your aftermarket up control arms, all uh, yep. remote reservoir yep. uh, bypass shockies on there. All right, let's go to the back. Let's go where the magic happens. Well, mate, obviously this is the first thing you see that's just like the wow factor because you've kept the back seats in, but how many goes did you have drawing this up? Was there a few different designs or okay. this was it? Yeah, no, it took me a little bit of talk and Mick into this. Yeah. To, uh, well, basically, essentially it's a triple cab, not, a, not the normal dual cab conversion. Exactly. Um, the scary part was cutting the back off a brand new VX yeah, with like 11Ks that. on it. <laughs> but he had it all worked out. They sliced the back off, yep. they sliced the chassis, they got the new J-Max system already assembled, ready to go. Yep. They slid it over the chassis well, and then just in. graft it all in. Because the lines on this thing is what's the most impressive. Like, that looks absolutely unreal. The, the way they've just tied this whole thing in, I'm, I'm blown away. The boys have done a bloody stellar job. They did an incredible job. As I said, with all these radiuses here, it looks yep. like it's factory. It does look factory. And then when Murray did the, uh, the tree point canopy, he made up all these little triangle bits as well, which yep. is an extra you don't usually do. So it fills in all the wheel arches nicely. Yeah, it looks really cool. Mate, he's done a killer cool job. They've done right. an incredible job. So yours is, um, we'll just kneel down here, yours is a little bit different to um, Brad's in the rear. 
So obviously J Max, um, full J Max uh, housings, um, and then run us through the suspension on the rear because it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. So it, it is quite similar, but yeah, a little bit different. Just got Icon suspension uh, uh, shocks in there. Sorry. Yep. Now what I've got is airbag man bellows on the, the middle axle. Yep. And coils and coil helpers on the rear. Okay. Um, but this is really cool when we got our rooftop tents and I've got a little caravan level in the center console. Yeah. Yeah. And I can just push the airbag side to side, up and down, and I can level the whole car. It's unreal. And shortly, we're actually going to be removing the rear coils and putting full air in, in all full of them. Air. So the other thing is, you know, it's a little bit heavy. It's tall, not as tall as a troopy, but it's tall. Yep. So if you're driving on a side slope on the beach, I can actually lower one side and lift the other side up to level the car going through it. I never thought about that. It's I've got full, unreal. I've got full air in the GU Patrol and um, our camera car, and I never thought about actually changing the level when you're driving on terrain that's uneven. It's got an air tank in it. Um, which is there's always enough air ready to go and the switches they're so quick the airbag man airbag man to put their um their little manifolds in the back there. Yep. It's just two buttons and just away it goes. Away it goes, it's awesome. And then of course, you know, pulling up for your rooftop tents to level it out. That's I'm chatting right. to them at the moment to see what we can do in my new 70 um, to see if we can bag the rear because I'd love to just be able to pull up, level the rooftop tents up, away you go. It's unreal, even when we pulled up here, I just lowered the back down so we can get to the barbie on the other side. Quite easy, so. <laughs> All that's, right, that's well, awesome. unreal. Obviously, full J-Max chassis again. We'll keep, yep. we'll keep walking around the back and have a look at that. All right, so around the back here, this is, this is just the end of the chassis. Uh, we've got the Warren 16 and a half ton in there, which has actually been used to tow Brad's car. Oh yeah, uh, down in Tassie when you oh uh, cop that Brad, you've so, been towed out by the MSA truck. Yeah, but in fairness, he actually towed me once as well. <laughs> we, uh, we both had a similar issue. Uh, yeah, we, we've since then fixed that issue. But, yeah, uh, yes, we had to tow each other. I, I have noticed that um, obviously yours is a later build, so this is the new J Max um, is, chassis yeah. for the 200s. It's slightly different to Brad's. He had some recovery points up here. Notice the recovery points have moved, uh, and it's slightly different configuration for the winch cradle, but. Yeah, that uh, is very similar. We've made up the extra plate, um, just got our logo up there and got those different the worn epic uh, fair leads in there as well. Yep. And this gave me a good spot. We've got water coming out here, water in, gas, two airlines, the solar is there, and then we've got our normal towing over that side. So. Towing over here, and what's this one here? That's an Anderson oh, plug. Oh, Anderson. Ah, uh, for your, for your caravans. No, I don't tow. Yeah, 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 okay, if you ever <laughs> tow. Yeah. So we've got it all here, it's really easy to get to. And You've got it all, there's uh, about 10 outlets there. That's the most I've ever seen on the back of the truck, I think. Well, the good part is there's gas bottles in the side you'll see in a minute, yep. okay, and that's already plumbed to here, and shortly a, uh, I'm gonna put a shower up here. Okay. Um, you know, Pelican case, so we can just oh, put the gas, gas straight, straight up to in. that, and then we've got a hot shower. Unreal. And then we've got our water there. So. All right, well, uh, canopy-wise, you have trig gone point. with the trig point. Yep. Mate. I just love it, I love the look of it, I love everything about it. Trig Point make an absolutely beautiful canopy. I, I looked at them heavily when doing my build, and the reason I sort of went away from it is because I wanted to jack my canopy off, but yep. obviously uh, yours is something that's going to stay fixed apparently. I don't want to be taking this off ever. No, the but, amount of wiring into this thing is insane, it's, insane, so yeah. it's going to stay there. Um, okay. Obviously the rooftop tents are on there as well, everything's... Yeah, she's all she's she's connected. Uh, yeah. Well, this sort of truck's not something you're going to drive every day. Um, you know, it'll be for the big trips and to certain shows and bits and pieces. But I guess when it's a daily, see, my Land Cruiser will end up being a little bit of a daily. So I like the idea to be able to come home and jack it off. But um, this thing, probably not. So obviously, reversing camera up the top and down the bottom. Yep. Okay. So we got standard Toyota there. Yep. And that one's into a mirror. Okay. Um, like up top. Up top. Yep. So I can actually just switch that on as a rear view mirror. Yep. Anytime I want. So you got the twin spares mounted on the back. Uh, the old MSA gear bag. Let's go on with a sneaky little aerial up top here, mate. Yeah. Okay. So that's for a Powertech Selfie. Um, oh, so okay. It's a, it's a mobile range extender. I'm going to so put one of them in the new truck. Basically, just got that to put it up when we need. And that, yeah, yeah, most of the time when you're travelling. And how does it go? Have you used it, it much? It works awesome. So. Okay, so not for, that I want to stay in mobile range, yeah, I know. but I sometimes sort of you have to. Sometimes. So, for those who don't know, it's basically a mobile phone cell booster. So, it's a, what are they called? Cell. It's a cell fire. Cell fire. It's a mobile extender. 
Yeah. So it basically extends your range where you'd normally be borderline. Yeah. You get a reasonable service. So from what I've been told, if you have maybe like one bar of 4G, it'll boost you up to three or four Correct, bars. Yeah. If you've got nothing, you've got nothing. But if you've got a little bit of range, it'll boost you up. So I'm definitely going to put one of them in, yeah, in uh, the new truck. Sneaky uh, little light force light, light force bar up. at the back. Yeah, that's got some stadium lighting up there, which yeah. that's uh, pretty bright up there. We got the light force lights all the way around. Yep. And they're all dual switch, so I can turn them from inside the cab or up here. And yep. If you're driving past looking for a good campsite or something, exactly. Put the light on. It's all, good. all right. Well, that pretty much sums up the back. Let's go around, pop the bonnet, and see what's under the hood. Oh. 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 All right. So. There's a little bit going on. I actually have no idea what's going on under here, knowing this car, probably lots. There seems to be lots going on everywhere, but um, run us through, obviously, uh, it's the V8 turbo diesel, um, the 4.5 litre, twin turbo V8. What have you done to it? Okay, what have we done? Um, first of all, obviously it's got the second battery in it. The latest 200s have come with a single battery, so we've doubled up that one, yep. same as the old ones used to. Uh, we've got the PWR intercooler yep. on the top there, helps to keep everything a little bit cooler. The biggest thing is this little box here, combined with this thing here, the Safari Armac system. Yep. This is a DPF car. It drives incredible. It craps all over my 200 series that I had before. Okay. It's, the power in this thing is unbelievable. Um, I don't know what they've done. They sent their tuner up to personally tune this one. Yep. Uh, because it's obviously not a off the shelf out of the showroom car. Yeah. Um, they've done an absolutely incredible job. The power is just incredible. The torque's incredible. You've got five different settings in there, so you can, if you're towing or if you're four-wheel driving or you want a comfort mode or a sport mode, you can yep. push the button. It is unbelievable. I am very familiar with the Safari ECU. I've got it in the 76. Um, as we're filming this, the truck's on its way to Safari. Um, the boys down there are about to throw um, it in the new 79. So obviously it's compiled with the Armax uh, snorkel, snorkel as well, so the nice big snorkel. We always get, I get a lot of people ask, why are you still running the snorkel instead of a Stano? Noise, um, forward facing ram head, you just can't beat it instead of having uh, the, the, the Stano in your ear just humming away. But uh, mate, unreal, what, what else have we got? What else we got That's over about here it. Is, um, We've got the ARB diff breathers up top there, is yeah, it? Yeah, we've got diff breathers over there. Yep. Um, we've got a Direction Plus catch can. Now, I don't know if people think these are important or not, but the amount of oil that I drain out of this catch can drain, which is just under the front there, yep. is incredible. It does a bloody awesome job. Um, it really takes all that, that vented oil from recirculating back through your system. Yep. Um, and down in under here, in the abyss of stuff, they've actually put a transmission cooler in. Okay. And they're going to put a thermofan one on shortly, so the auto is just always cool. Yeah, Which right. obviously there's a bit of weight here. You drive, oh, you saw me driving the soft sand there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, auto is always just, yeah, never had a, never missed a beat. So, Perfect. Um, I am going to change the air box shortly. These things, I don't know, I can, don't seem to have a great seal on them. No, it doesn't, It, it does doesn't it. at all, so I've actually got a radius one that's arrived the other day, which I'm going to put in there, so okay. I can fill you in on that one after when we see how it goes. All right, you've got a couple of little bloody circles going on here. ERPS, is that is that your rust protection? That is, that's rust protection. So yep. if this has obviously had a lot of body and chassis work, and you know, when you're cutting yes. and weld, you're always going to get, that's that's the start of rust. Yep. Uh, so one of these is hooked to the chassis and one's hooked to the body and it just provides a little current that goes through yep. and just rejects rust from starting, it, it's unreal. So. There's, there's always been talking, does electronic rust protection work, does it not? Uh, in Theoretically, the science, it should work, so I, I, I don't know, I've never personally used it, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it on the new vehicle, I think. This car's only got 20,000 Ks on it. Yep. I don't know yet, but I know from previous vehicles, yep. it worked. Okay. So <laughs> Anyone did. that sort of has it said it's worked. It's normally people that don't have it and go, ah, oh, that bullshit doesn't yeah. work. So. We do tend to look after our cars pretty well. Anything with a MSA on the side of it is barred from salt water. Okay. Um, and then we're always washing them down and stuff, but you're still, um, you'll still get issues. But we've had them on most of our cars and never had any rust. Never had any rust. So. Definitely recommend them. Anything else under the bonnet or that just about sums her up? I think that pretty much sums up, sums up under the bonnet there. All right, let's jump in the car and have a look and then we'll work our way back to the canopy. I've just hopped in the cockpit. <laughs> have a go at this. If you own a 200 series, I'll tell you what, you're gonna be copying this. So what's going on in the middle here? Okay, so I've got an iPad that folds up 
that, that sits over the top of the screen. So, you know, if I want, I can still get to everything. You can still see the standard reverse camera. Yep. Um, but down here, I can control my GoPro from all of this stuff if I want. Got the GoPro, GoPro mounted up, up top. There. Then you've just got your standard iPad. Obviously, you hook this thing up to the internet. You've got all your apps, your HEMA, everything. Yeah, it is. It's a um, it's, it's got everything on there. So yeah, I can go into HEMA. There. See exactly where we are. Can, uh, that it. is cool as shit. If, if you've we, got if a two hundred series, if we want, we can Google search any hotels nearby or whatever. Um, but you know, even go and do some bank transfers. Some bank. The passenger while we're driving, of course. Well, we'll start from right to left because we got a bit bit to get through here. So you've got a little Garmin in the corner. Yeah, that's, that's just, just a, GPS. That's just a net man. I mainly use that just for um, just odometer. Um, how far I've travelled and yep. just, um, yeah, just fuel I uh, gauge what I've used and stuff. So that's all that one really does. Navigation I use there. Yeah, so. that makes sense. You got your phone holder. You got uh, a nice little pouch up here for your sunnies. That's just for my sunnies and glasses because I now I need uh, reading glasses as well. And yep. I was always looking for them, so I got my machinists to make up just a little pouch there which holds them both. So yeah, unreal. That's pretty cool. Um, then you've got your XRS unit tucked in nicely down here. That's right. Then this looks pretty flash, so run us through this top little uh, console. Okay, so you've got two airbag man gauges up here. Yep. Um, I can turn the compressor on, you can hear the, the twin pump compressor in the back there. Yep. And then I can just up and down, side to side, level it Control all up from here. Car. If these lights annoy me at night, I can just turn them all off. Perfect. So, yeah, it's just a whole little and the, air this is and this is a nice little touch having a couple of USB points on, on each side. You for it, you can't have enough little uh, outlets for your phone. That's right. I hate wires dangling everywhere. So in the back of that is also other outlets which do the, the GPS. Up the top here, we've got a hummingbird, just a, a small monitor for each battery station. So we've got the okay. starting, the winching, and the lithium batteries, and it just tells me what's in each. Yeah, and just up here we've got the Garmin dash cam, yep. um, GoPro. I can turn all of these on and off when I want as well. Um, there's USB outlets up in there. Yep. And then I've got the mirror. Um, when the ignition's on, I can turn that on and off and, and have a look out and the have back. Have a look out the back. And then obviously the VX, you've got the sunroof up top, which uh, is, is pretty bloody cool. It's cause... still working as well, and it can still uh, tilt itself up and miss the uh, the rack up there. So. Yeah, right. Um, what else can I see? You've got a few switches down here. Yeah, I'm a big fan of switches. I like to be able to push something and hear it click. And that's so I've got my diff lock compressor. The two, yep. two rear lockers. Yep. On with two rear lockers, of course. Yes, you know. of course. And then there's the front locker. Yep. Um, the rear winch power, so you can't just plug into it. Okay. Then I link my batteries, the, the four batteries there. Yep. And then I can turn the inverter on. And there's 240 power here, there's 240 power down there, and 240 in the back, so they can charge whatever they want. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I could. <laughs> uh, and then you've gone and got even carried away with the armrest, so you've given yourself a bit of a... Yeah, that's right. Um, having a bit of a crook back and shoulders, um, I find if I've got my arm up on here, I get sore in there and I'm getting older and yeah, just yeah. I'm starting to whinge a lot. So we've got some really cool leather Recaros in here, so I made a matching console. So what I found was I was sitting in really comfy seat, but my arms were all over the place. So I had this custom bit made up, yep. which is really cool. You can still use all your console yep. stuff. You can get to everything. Perfect. Um, if you want to move it, you can pull that off when you're cool. forward driving and you can still turn your wheel and stuff. And matching armrests on the outside. Sort of like a bit of an armchair. It's a proper, right? proper lounge chair, this thing. <laughs> um, Insane, absolutely insane. Looks nothing like a 70 series. <laughs> that is so, so comfortable. Honestly, after driving my last 200 compared to this, yep. this is just incredible. It is so smooth, the power, it stops. Um, all right, well, let's go into the next row. We've got a few rows to get through, hang in. All right, so we'll have a look in the back, mate. Most of this row is pretty standard, yep. That's all standard, yep. That's all standard, so that's your standard 200 series. And then, uh, pull that down and up. Down and up. And it's standard in there as well. Still got the you full got third row of seats in the back here. They've got tons of room in there. They've got all There's the a lot of room in there, right? There is a lot of room. It's, it's standard 200 with the back seats up. I can't say I've ever actually sat in the third row of a 200, but that is the third row in this is flasher than the front row in a 70. It's really <laughs> nice. They've got their little cup holders, their charge points everywhere, yep. and the storage behind the back seats as well. So we keep yeah, all right. our sleeping bags and stuff down there and there's first aid kit and all the other stuff we need up in there. Unreal. They can get in there really easy and uh, yeah, they love it. It's so comfortable. All right, well, 
let's get to the magic end of town. This is what you guys all have been waiting for. And me too, just quietly, because I'm starving and we're gonna have some lunch. Let's have a look, open her up, mate. All right, there we go. So Ooh la bit, la. <laughs> this was the bit I couldn't carry when I had a wagon full of kids. Yes. So in here, obviously we've got the two fridges on our MSA drop slides. All right, so you got MSA drop down, um, and is this an 80 litre? That's a 60 litre single zone. 60 snow litre single zone snow master. And on the other side, we've got a dual zone, so that's got freezer and a fridge. So perfect. And that uh, keeps some ice in there and ice springs, which is cool. Load it up, keep the kids happy. All right, now up top here, well, while we're here, everyone's looking at it. Show us this one. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> This is my favourite part of this car, and not many cars have done something like this. Uh, I'm excited by this. Oops. A little fat tray there. This is our drop down Barbie. How so bloody we've got cool a two is that? There. It's all plumbed into the car, so the gas bottle's in the side. I've just got the quick disconnect hose there. Yep. Not only is it a Barbie. But it's also a two burner cooker. Two burner well. cooker. So this is this is a full blown kitchen. That's a full kitchen. That's unreal. That is cool. Well, what do you, you got five kids, so I suppose you got a tribe to feed. So yeah. You... And I got it, it's not a big deal, but we got stick on heat shield all around there, so we can actually paint them up straight away when it's hot. Okay. It's no so all underneath here is covered in heat shield. Yep. Oh, yep. So it doesn't doesn't get warm. Yep. And that's just an extra on there. We can pack it away. Cool. That is very bloody flash. Now, the 12 volt system in this thing is super impressive. So most of the 12 volt access is on this side. Yes, yep. Let's go. First, straight off the bat, we'll run through everything I can see. You got your fusion stereo system, um, which is always coming in handy. Then you've got your Hummingbird electronics to, that, that, that manages how many batteries in the canopy? Okay, so down in here, you can't see them, but they're hidden in there is six revolution slimline 60 amp hours. So, you know, it sounds like six batteries is insane, but it's a 360 amp hour system, basically. Yep. And that's 360 usable amps. Oh, no, um, no. So I've got the Red Arc BCDCs up there. They charge that. Yep. Um, we can plug it in and charge it. While it's so you got stationary. two Red Arc BCDCs up yeah. there? Yep. And then a C-Tech char charger? C-Tech does the starting batteries. Okay. And, uh, and the other one, winching batteries and stuff. So, and then yeah, it's the, all just plug in and charge. The Victron system, is that just your 240 volt? The Victron's just a gauge. Okay. Much. Um, there's a uh, Red Arc inverter over the back there, so I can switch that on from here via a solenoid or okay. in the cab. How big's the inverter? A 2000 watt. Perfect. Yep. Um, we've got all our switches up here. You can switch everything on. So, all the switchings, all your lights, your rooftop tent, your cell. You compress our cell fly. Yep. Um, this down here, we up here, sorry, we've got a, a jump start. If the lithium batteries ever do get too low, they shut themselves off. Okay. So you can plug a 12 volt supply into it. Yep. Um, and give them a boost and they'll fire back up. All right, so that means you've got six 60 amp hours at the back. Yep. Then you've got the two winching so revolutions winching. on the side. Okay, so what we've got is the six revolutions down the back. Yep. Uh, there's two hybrid lead acid batteries down the side there. Yep. All of those are charged by Red Arc BCDCs. So it's not a huge um, pull on the alternator. Yep. But what it does have is a, um, a 220 amp rapid power, fully sealed, water cooled alternator in it. Okay. So that, that is on rail. The alternators generally down the, they are on the bottom yep. of the engine on a 200, so they get full of crap. Shit. Yep. These are fully sealed, so highly recommend it's a rapid power alternator. Yep. And, um, so it'll charge those start batteries first. Yep. Then through the uh, the BCDCs, it does the winch batteries, and then same down here, it does all ten batteries. <laughs> How much um, fresh water storage have you got? Okay, so up in here is a hundred litre stainless tank. Okay. Which feeds into another hundred litre Brown Davis stainless tank under there. So we've got two hundred litres of water. Two hundred litres of water. You can never have enough fresh water. You can never have enough fresh Especially water. Especially if you're going to run a, a bit of a shower system. Full compressed there. If you have a look under here. Okay, what we've got is the lock compressor, the ARB twin pump, pump compressor, and there's a water pump there. Yep. Then all the airbag man manifolds. So, um, yeah, I can switch that pump on and it all just comes out the back. <laughs> that is insane. Well done, airbag man. They've done a good job of that. They've done a really good job. That's all. Um, and yeah, that ARB twin pump compressor just goes. Happens, yeah. That runs into a 
an 18 litre tank that's up under in there somewhere. Okay, 18 litre bloody air tank. Just an well. air tank, so that gives you enough for that air bellows to go up and down. Yep, very neat. And this uh, behind this little system, that's where you slide your that's um, my full marquee. gazebo in. My gazebo fits in there. That's then, actually epic. So it's a full three and a half metre gazebo, this one. Three yep. or three and a half. Um, three by three gazebo. Yep. And then on top of that, we fit all the kids' chairs, and up there we've got room for all their clothes bags. Yep, clothes bags, and then you've got the rooftop tent ladders, I'm guessing? That's just a ladder because I'm shorter than some, or most, so that's just to yeah, undo the rooftop tents. And, yep, ladder um, to get up on top of the car. We've got of storage room in here. So. Um, and then I see you, you've got one of the striker sticks. The fire strikers, hopefully I'll never have to use it. If you've, uh, if you've never seen these, these are your little fire extinguisher. I've got, I've got these in all of my vehicles now after I did have the car catch on fire. If you haven't got a fire striker in your car, go grab yourself one of them. You can get them from ARB or I don't know where else. Just get yourself a fire extinguisher and put it in your car. Um, let's go around and have a quick look at the other side. I think I think we've covered everything on this side. Yeah, we've done most of it on this side. Um, this is the ultimate man kitchen as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. How yeah, good. Perfect. Gazebo, you got the MSA drawers. So in this side is my tool warehouse. Just good drawer. I can't carry enough tools. Yeah. I just would rather carry tools than dinner plates. <laughs> <laughs> so you got um, spares, you yeah, spares socket box. set, your tire repair kit, obviously some 12 volt gear. Charger stuff and one of our tool rolls that's got just a massive Everything. range of stuff in it. So. And then what's in this one? Oh just a small table or oh, 12 volt chainsaw. And a chainsaw, yep. Which fits in there nicely. Um, some spare batteries, just bits and pieces. Just all your fire camping. starter. Yep. So just usual camping equipment. Camping, yeah. uh, chair? That's just my chair. Chair, yep. and then you've got another that's drop out. down with the, this is the dual just, zone. That's a dual zone, yeah. That we are talking about. And yep. then you said just all you load up here with all your kids' bags and bits and pieces. Yep. And then something that I have seen in a few canopies now that I quite like is these sort of, well they're not flush now, but these little uh, LED light force lights. Yeah, they're unreal. Really, really cool. These ones on the tree point. Go in, in that way. Yep. I've also got other LED strips up in there because just cause. Yep. Um, and yeah, these ones are, are good, especially on the other side when you're cooking a barbie. Yeah. Um, and they're switched up there. They also work off normal door pressure switches. Oh, okay. So you can leave them on all the time if you want, and they'll turn off when you close. We're getting through it. This thing has got the works. Where's the kitchen sink, honestly? Uh, yeah, that's in here. We've got. <laughs> we've actually got a, a small tub which has got all the washing up stuff in yep. it, which you just sits up in here. We take it out. And Unreal. With the tables and stuff. So. Well, I think the only other thing we've got to have a look at is the rooftop tent. That kind of wraps up the canopy. Unless there's anything else you can think of. Yeah, I think a, just a, about a fair few it. more things, but I think we've covered most we've of covered, it. We've covered the most of it. Storage or the, the jacking gear. That's your Jack diesel filler. Two diesel fillers. So. So what? Yeah. How many tanks? Have you got two fuel tanks, so yep. standard front tank of 90 litres, yep, and a Brown Davis 180 litre 180 in the litres. back. Okay. Uh, I don't know how they do this system, I don't understand it, but the gauge works across both tanks, yeah, right. Okay, so it doesn't, it just feeds and it says it's full and it slowly goes down and uses both tanks at the same time, so like levels them out. It's incredible, yeah, oh, awesome. So that's what Brown Davis does with the aftermarket. You think, oh, you know, something like this would be horrendous on fuel, yep. We went out to uh, Manor Park the other week, had a, a trailer full of dirt bikes, a million kids, all our camp gear. Yep. I sat on 100 to 110 uh, with cruise control on, 22 litres per 100. So I think that's pretty damn good. That's better than mine. For um, six. <laughs> for six tonne of weight plus a trailer. So. Unreal. Yeah, that's really cool. So we got a really good range with it. We've got like 11, 1200 Ks easy. Yep. Oh, that's that's so. perfect. You don't really need to go. As long as you've got about a thousand k's, you can pretty much go anywhere in this that's country, right. and, and you'll be all right. Sand chews it up a little bit more, but yeah, so. unreal. Oh. All right, well, let's have a look at these roof toppers and what's up on top. <coughs> all right, so up on top, you've got the uh, Rhino racks with the backbone system. Obviously, you've got your side light bars. You've got four match tracks on the roof, and then two of the eye campers. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Um, the Rhino racks are just like, give them an awesome base and it gives you a, yeah, a good system to mount everything to. So yep. um, they're unreal, didn't have anything else. And yeah, on top we've got two iCampers. So this one actually folds out, that's the 4X, the yep. SkyCamp 4X, 
will actually fold out into a king size mattress. Okay. So I can fit four of the smaller ones in there, no problem. And this one's just over a, a, a double mattress. The best thing is they look really cool, but they are so easy to set up and pull down. Yep. Really easy. Okay, so we've done a few Explore rigs now, mate. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give it to you. This one is by far the most elaborate setup um, that we filmed today. You've done an absolutely stellar job. Uh, hats off to all the companies that got around you and gave you a hand as well, because obviously a fair bit of innovation's gone into this one. But yeah, it has, yep. mate, it's an epic, epic truck. Uh, you should be absolutely stoked. Hell of a lot of thought went into it. I think a little bit outside of our box, yep. as you can tell with our products. Yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, we can cart seven, sleep seven, feed them, wash them, look after them, and we don't have to tow anything. And we go wherever we want. So Unreal. I need to do to uh, also thank all these companies that helped out because uh, to build something like this without a little bit of support, yeah, I might have had to um, remortgage my house or something. Yep. So actually, it's not that bad. But they've, they've helped out quite a lot. Yeah, um, I do want to say a special thank you to my product manager Matt Mason. He's yep. just been incredible in this build. With, yep. uh, with his knowledge and what he's done to help me out. So thanks, mate. Well done. Unreal. All right. Well, look, mate. Um, enjoy your next adventure. Have you got a big one coming up? Uh, yeah. When summer's over, we're, we're going to get down to the Victorian High Country. Yep. And uh, go and spend a few weeks down there. And so, I guess the only question that I probably will ask is: there anything else you're going to throw on this? Is there anything extra that you or anything you would have done differently? Well, I've already done everything twice. Yeah. Um, I've rewired it twice, uh, we changed the suspension. Um, so I am going to put the other airbag man. Airbag in, yeah. Yep. That's so the, looking forward to that. Yep. Um, and yeah, not a lot after that. So Should we just a, about done? A slide out kitchen's going in there. Yep. That's just about it. So. Oh, well, thanks a lot for showing us around, mate. I, uh, I bloody enjoyed this one. It was no unreal. Worries, mate. Anytime. Thank you. All right, well, there we go. That's a wrap on what would have to be the baddest 200 series getting around in Australia. Let me know in the comments uh, if there's anything I missed and you want to know. I'll make sure we get on to Shane and he helps us out uh, and answers any of your questions. If you are enjoying this, make sure you like, subscribe. Until next time, make sure you guys get out and enjoy the Explore Life. See you next time.